All right, everybody. Well, hey, we get rock and roll here a couple minutes late, but uh, sounds good. All right, today is the uh, bringing home the bacon version of Note Night in America for tonight. For some weird reason, I don't know what was going on there, but anyway, we are glad to have you here tonight, everybody. Uh, definitely grab a piece of paper and a pencil, a pen, freaking something to write some notes with because you're going to want to definitely go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you may be out in the cold wishing you had some bacon. But anyway, uh, guys, we are excited to be here as always with our Note Night in America webinars. Our goal uh, in five years is to help educate and create 10,000 note investors out there. We're honored to have you here tonight to have us joining us. Um, we are just jacked up. Lots of great things are going on. When it pours, it rains, and we just keep shoveling water as best we can to keep taking advantage of as many opportunities as the market has available right now. There's a lot happening right now, and I'm just, just overjoyed. Just a lot of great stuff going on, and if you're not making offers or working deals or stuff like that, you must be doing something wrong, but I know that a lot of us sometimes have mental blocks on some things, or we get banging our head against the wall with some things, and sometimes we need to take a step back or somebody to kind of help give us a fresh uh, look at what we do, and so that's what tonight's a little bit about there. Uh, who's on tonight? We have a variety of people joining us on tonight. We have uh, our regular set of note investors, people that are also real estate investors looking to get into the note space. Um, our active uh, note crew, our note family out there who's doing an amazing job uh, getting deals done and, you know, not just talking the talk, but literally walking the walk. And as always, these car, uh, these calls are recorded. Uh, I see the red button there for where I've got it recorded, which is great. Uh, these are always available on WeCloseNotes.tv. And of course, always, you can catch the Note Night in America podcast as well on iTunes, Google Podcasts, all that great stuff out there as well for you, okay? So good stuff for you out there, everybody. We are just excited, as I said, to be here with you tonight. But um, our No Closure Show podcast, one of our new uh, landmark, 130,000. That's actually a week old. We're over, uh, almost on our way to 135,000 as of the last six days. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. We keep promising uh, and we will keep, continue to deliver great interviews, great content to help you take your business to the next level. If you're not listening, check it out. The Note Closer Show podcast. You can guess all of our episodes on YouTube, Vimeo.com or WeCloseNotes.tv as well, or just going straight to the website and checking them out there. But um, we are literally, wow, it's hard to believe that, about two and a half weeks out from, actually, uh, yeah, about two and a half weeks, actually, one, two, two and a half weeks uh, from us heading up to Dallas for the Dallas Note Mastermind. We're going to have a couple of amazing days there. Uh, 60 plus of our mastermind members. We've got a few people coming in for a sneak peek to check it out and hang with us for two days. Of course, that buttons up with the Quest Expo on the 25th and 26th, that Saturday and Sunday, which we're glad to be a part of. But uh, if you missed today's episode on Note Night, or not Note Night in America, Night's Note Night America, but the Note Closer Show podcast with Haley Gannon. And so you can catch that replay by looking at Facebook uh, from this morning on the replay. But we literally talked about the whole schedule, who was speaking when, what panels they had going on when. And so we're pretty stoked about that, guys. Uh, lots of great stuff going to be taking place there at the uh, uh, Quest Expo. If you want to get a sneak peek pass, we might have, I think we have like one or two sneak peek passes available left for a thousand bucks so that you guys can literally uh, join us and uh, uh, literally spend two days with our mastermind group to get rocking and rolling out there. So that's a couple of the, the cool things out there as well that's coming up. So, but anyway, uh, other upcoming events, literally this, uh, this Thursday night, I know craziness. Uh, I'll be speaking in Dublin, Ohio <laughs> at the, uh, central Ohio real estate investors, entrepreneurship, uh, notes subgroup, uh, this Thursday night, uh, excited to be there. We've got some great stuff. I'll be discussing uh, on, what you can do with your note business and the other things as well out there as well. So this is one thing you don't want to miss. August the 9th, you're going to be there in Dublin around Columbus. Come out and join us and we'll have a good time. Also, you can uh, join us this Saturday and Sunday at the notes, uh, the Midwestern Note Summit, not taking place in Cincinnati. It's actually outside of Cincinnati in Mason, Ohio at the uh, Great Wolf Lodge. Uh, tickets, I think, are $197 still per person. 
Um, I think they've gone over the 150 mark. It's going to be a good event. Myself, Donna Bauer, being Jones Cox. Um, uh, Tony Satil will be there actually from uh, uh, Satil and uh, Burrell, a training firm. There's a lot of great stuff going on in the note business there. Uh, so you definitely want to join us there in outside of Cincinnati in Mason, Ohio. Uh, next Tuesday night, I'm excited to be up in DFW at the Propelio DFW Rhea uh, Meetup. I'll be speaking there. I also have a booth. I'm going to come out and hang out uh, for the note closer show or ex come out and hang out with some of your extended note family. We'll be glad to have you. August 20th, Propelli is doing one in San Antonio on a Monday night. So we'll be down there actually doing the note night in America live from there. And then, like I said, the note mastermind in Dallas, Texas, the quest expo. And then we have a hard to believe in September note camp 6.0, literally uh, two and a half months out from everything. So pretty stoked about that. Everybody uh, just, getting rock and rolling here. I'm just hanging on. I'm trying to hit one more thing here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Cancel. I'm trying to get a link here to share to everybody. Anyway, we're moving on. I just missed it there. Uh, but I will tell you this. One thing we're excited about is this week, actually, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, and Friday, we have the Ohio, not the road show, but the Ohio note show. One of the cool things we're doing, Steph and I did this in Michigan uh, a couple weeks ago. Since we're going to go out to Ohio, we decided why not just go ahead and jump in the car and take a look at a bunch of assets along the way. So we've got a, a ton of assets, actually 60 plus assets around Columbus, Cincinnati, up around Cleveland, Akron, Toledo, Dayton that we're going to be hitting in the two and a half days that Steph are there before we have to show up in Mason for the uh, Midwest Note event. So Midwest Note Summit. So pretty stoked about that. So you'll want to stay tuned to your Facebook, check out some of the deals that we're working through. Uh, three different funds. Actually, the red ones are ones that I already currently own our portfolio. The blue ones are ones that we're looking at from another fund. And the green ones is from a, th a second fund of stuff that we initially have in a contract and they're going to be taking a look at. So pretty stoked about that, everybody. It's going to be a fun, fun time out there uh, looking. So stay tuned to your Facebook as we share updates of what's going on. Share, uh, you know, some photos and kind of what we're doing. We've got deal sheets being created here in the office tonight with Shannon as well, our marketing interns putting some stuff together. And some of these deals may be available to those that are interested, especially if you're going to be at the event this weekend. We may make some notes available to you. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns of that? Busy B or yeah, we're pretty busy right now. And that's not including the other portfolio of 200 plus assets we got sent to us today as well to take a look at. That's an all or nothing bid that we're working through <laughs> as of this afternoon. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a little, little busy out there with everybody. So one quick second here. I'm looking at something here. We have live stream. We're good with that. All right, good. Oh, all righty. Moving on. Uh, Note Camp 6, like I said, still 50% off tickets. Go to notecamp.live and order there for the uh, a big event upcoming here in September. 30-plus investors. Sorry, 30-plus speakers. A ton of people. And I'm going to make things for you. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Somebody who just commented on that. Uh, we are excited about that, right? Uh, the big, big pool of stuff across the country. So, man, when it rains, it pours. But anyway, moving on. Any questions about any of the upcoming events this next week or two weeks? Wondering how to get a ticket to the Midwest Note Expo or the Midwest Note, Note Summit? Please shoot me a message. Drop me an email. And we're glad to get you a link out to there because it's for 197 for two days with 200 investors. Vina Jones Cox, first of all, puts on a great event. I've known Vina for years. Um, just got some good stuff myself. Donna Bauer will be speaking there. And we're just going to share some fun stuff. Fun stuff. We'll be talking about marketing on Saturday and then talking about notes and other things on Sunday morning there. Okay. Question here. Yes, I know it's you. You are showing up. I'm just not letting anybody know who asked, who sent me the tape, if that makes sense. All right? Okay. Don't need your question. I see you. That's all that matters. <laughs> I can send it privately. But anyway, moving on here. Let's dive into the content tonight of bringing home the bacon. Okay? Bringing home the bacon. And so let me share something with you guys here. Okay? When I got started in the note industry, I didn't have crap, okay? Um, 
I didn't have much of anything in my business, okay? Uh, I literally was struggling. I had come out of a bad situation, uh, was divorced. Um, I had my own country western song, some bad deals that just went south. So what you have to realize is what I'm going to talk about tonight are literally the things that I had to do because I still had to pay bills. I still had to bring uh, food home for me to survive on and pay my bills and make things happen. So what I'm going to share with you tonight is a no bullshit way to literally help you make money. If you're not willing to do the things I'm going to talk about tonight, literally, you need to get a J-O-B um, and just go back to work somewhere. So that's the important thing tonight. You, you, I'm going to be a no bullshit aspect of how you can make money in the notes business space without any of your own credit, without any of your own money tonight. It's it's just an important thing for you to realize tonight that it is, it is straight up. Hey, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. And I don't want to hear any excuses. Because one of the things that I talk about, I, I enjoy talking with people. I enjoy especially talking with people that are going to take action that are coachable and, and making things happen. And I get text messages from people today. Oh my gosh, this bank, the marketing blitz thing is awesome. I've got a, six, a 30% open rate. And I get six phone calls with asset managers. I had two tapes sent to me. We deliver. The proof is in the pudding, okay? All right? The proof is in the pudding, okay, on what we do. And so tonight, okay, tonight is all about that. Tonight is all about the no bullshit, straight up, let's get some stuff rocking and rolling. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. And it's time to be honest with you. Yes, I got the bacon hat, okay? Yes, I have the bacon hat. And everybody loves bacon. We know this, right? Okay? So let's dive into what we're going to talk about tonight because I think it's important. Get straight into the meat and potatoes of the thing or the bacon of that aspect and go from there, okay? So... What's unfortunately is most people never get the sizzle. They never get the understanding of selling the sizzle of the stuff. And I want you to, for a second tonight, just I just want you to shut your mouth. And I want you to shut the voices in your head about why you can't or can't do things. Okay? I want you just to be quiet for a little bit and save your questions at the end tonight. Okay? Save your comments at the end. All right? Because most people never get the sizzle. Okay? And what's funny is on Saturday when I posted a video of bacon, a four-hour video of bacon that we did the four minutes out of, people are like, oh, my gosh, I, I want a BLT. That looks good. You're making it difficult, okay? And if you think back to when you're a kid, I want you to do me a favor. Close your eyes. I want you to think back when you're a kid. And it's on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. You're waking up. Maybe you're not getting ready to go see cartoons yet, but you're waking up. Something smells really good. And suddenly, before you know what that smell is, your stomach starts to growl because it just, it's just instantaneous. And it's bacon. Or it's maybe as you get a little bit older, it's the coffee pot. It's fresh brewed coffee. But for most of us, even those that don't like bacon now, who are, are the vegetarians or they want to go to the tofu route, which is regular, the smell of bacon is just phenomenal. I can actually taste it now. And I'm not talking about the plate of bacon that I've eaten here in between the stuff. What I'm talking about is that sizzle. Think about the sizzle and the smell. And suddenly it's like you were uplifted out of the bed magically and you made your way to the kitchen to where mom or dad is cooking that bacon. Okay? And in this analogy, when it especially comes to the note side, you're not the kid you're your mom or dad cooking the bacon and the people in the beds, things like that, smell it, they're coming to the table, your guests, your kids, whatever. They're the investors. They're the people out there that have money looking to buy stuff, okay? And so we get to think about it, and I'm going to break this down as simple as I can make it, okay? What do you have to do to cook some bacon? Think about this. What do you have to do to cook some bacon? So if you take it from a like I'm talking to a kindergartner. Well, you got to go buy some bacon. You got to go to the store and buy some bacon, right? Okay. Secondly, you got to get in your car or on your bike and bring it home, right? The third thing you have to do 
is you have to get a skillet. You got to get something out of the pantry or underneath in your cabinets and a bait. You got to get a skillet. Okay. And you know what you have to do? You just you, you have to turn on and, and or light the stove, right? If it's electric, turn on electric. If it's gas, you got to fire it up and get it rock and roll. You got to light the stove, get that heat cooking, right? Because you know what that heat is in real life? It's the pressure of bills. It's the pressure of people. It's the pressure providing for our families, okay? You have to then, five, can't just throw the whole package of bacon on there. Otherwise, you'll ruin it. You have to take the bacon out of the package and either throw it in one slice at a time, like a lot of people like to do, like the, like the layer at the bottom of it, or you can throw it all in at once if you're going to be the greedy person that ends up eating the whole thing, okay? The thing to keep in mind is then you're cooking the bacon, <laughs> okay? If you add the bacon to the skillet and turn the heat on, it can cook. It really doesn't need your help to cook it, but you want to probably – mess around with it when it's layered it out so it doesn't fry together or cook together. You don't burn anything, okay? The heat's not too high, so you have a grease fire, and then there goes your whole kitchen, okay? And then if you can't just eat it straight out of it once it's cooked. you let it, got to let it cool a little bit. You know what that means? Put it on a plate or put a paper towel down, okay? So the grease doesn't get everywhere. got to let it cool down, and then you eat the bacon, right? Or... A little shorter process, if you want to pay more, <laughs> you go buy the bacon already cooked. That's fine. And eat it straight from there. That's fine. But you're going to pay a, a, a pristine price for that pre-cooked bacon. Like today, when I went, it was funny. I, was, I went to Jason's Deli. Hey, I want to buy a pound of bacon. And they're like, huh? don't know how to do that. We ain't got a button to ring it up. I'm like, you got bacon you're adding to your sandwich. Just add me a bunch of extra sides. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So I went to another restaurant. I'm like, oh, they don't have bacon. I ended up at Wendy's. Like, oh, they got the Baconator. Okay. Then I'm like, okay, do you have extra bacon? And they're like, oh, you want bacon on your, your burger? I'm like, no, I want a pound of bacon. I'm like, uh, well, we can order. How many slices do you want? I was like, I don't know how many slices are in a pound. How many? Is it? Well, it's like three slices for $1.50. dollar fifty. like, great. Give me six orders of that. Give me 18 slices of bacon. All right. And yes, it was good. It was tasty. I'm probably going to have heartburn tonight, but that's okay. But the thing to keep in mind is that kids, one of the first things kids learn how to do cook is bacon because they love the smell of it. It gets them up. A bacon sandwich, right? <clears throat> bacon and cheese tacos, all right? Bacon, bacon, bacon. And if people didn't love bacon, they would make turkey bacon. They would make tofu bacon. The Canadians wouldn't have Canadian bacon. The reason like, everybody loves bacon is it's just freaking the shiznit, okay? It's the shiznit. And it's really one of the easiest thing. And it may not always be the healthiest thing, but my grandfather lived to be like 96 years old, having a uh, half a pound of bacon and two eggs every day. That's fine. I don't eat bacon every day. I have it occasionally. I'm trying to eat healthier. But what I'm trying to get at with everybody, if you think about the sizzle, most of you lack the sizzle. Most of you lack sharing the sizzle in your bacon. How good does bacon taste if you can't smell it? How good does bacon taste? How, do, how does it attract people to your table if they never know you're cooking anything? Think about this. A lot of you are running around, oh, I'm a cook. I'm a, I love bacon. I love bacon. But nobody could ever tell a damn thing if you ever ordered it or cooked it or what. Now, of course, I'm using analogies tonight with you guys a little bit. Okay. But a lot of you aren't doing anything. You're literally never getting out of bed in the morning. You're never getting off the couch. You're never even getting in the game. It's like you're looking at this. You're literally at the store looking at the bacon and afraid to pick it up and take it home and do it. Because what's the bacon? The bacon is the note deals that we see out there. The bacon is the assets that are literally out there for you to pick up. Okay. And if you want to wake guests up, start cooking bacon. <laughs> Pretty simple. If you're at your house and you want to start waking guests up, you don't go up there, hey, wake up. You either start cooking bacon or you make it, <laughs> you make a, a food run in the morning, okay? Something like that. The smell is going to get them up. It's the same thing with your investors, the people that are in your surroundings, okay? The smell of what you're working on is going to get them up, okay? And we all know bacon goes good on everything, all right? But you have to start and share the sizzle. 
you have to start it and share it. Not just or, I should have put and, okay? Now, how many of you have ever walked into a restaurant and suddenly been blown away and instantly hungry? Carabas Italian Grill is famous for as they shift begins or as they're late night, they run through with the, the, the melting peppers. Or if you go to Papa Do's or a Mexican restaurant where they bring in fajitas out, they throw those ice cubes on the skillet and the smell just evaporates through the restaurant. It gets you excited. It gets you hungry. It's like, ooh. Even though there's not really anything different, that's all up here. That's all. We're all Pavlo dogged ourselves, okay, into seeing that stuff and understanding what it tastes like. Lately, I, I taste fajitas right now, okay? okay? Or I tasted bacon when I thought about that. Or a lot of you guys, when I did the video the other day, you saw the bacon, you started tasting the bacon. I guarantee some of you went out and had a bacon sandwich or BLT that night, okay? And what you have to realize, everybody, is you have to add a little bam to your cooking. That bam has to be you. That's the spice. That's the emerald glossy bam. You know, we'll put a little bam with it. You guys are that bam. All right. You don't have to be, you know, an overweight Italian dude who really isn't a professional chef any type of training, but he can do it because he knows how to cook. He knows how to do the basics together. He's thrown some stuff together. He made a name for himself without really a lot of formal training, okay? Because he was willing to throw some stuff together, taste good, and add some bam to it, okay? He helped add the sizzle to what he was doing, right, everybody? He added the sizzle, okay? He added the sizzle. And so I'm just trying to see if there's anybody asking questions online. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, whatever. Facebook has must have changed the algorithm again. But anyway, so what I'm getting, so how do you bring home the bacon? Well, Pretty simple, okay? You And I shouldn't say how. You don't get anything by sitting on your ass, okay? Get off your butt and start doing something, all right? Start doing something. Quit just showing up and not doing actions, not taking actions of any sort, okay? And there are simple tools to help you make money and get the bam out there, all right? Or I should say help you get the bam out there. Simple tools, okay? If you can comment on Facebook or write a damn email, you can bring home the bacon, all right? Forget about raising capital now. Well, school, I don't have any money. I don't need private investors. I'm all tapped out. Oh, I'm so sick of that. I can't do anything because I don't have any, uh, any private investors. Get off your ass and quit. Start doing something, okay? Forget about the raising capital. If you go out and get the bam going, people will show up. You've heard the story about good deals find money. The reason good deals find money is because good deals are advertised... <sighs> And they pass the sizzle on, okay? They get the sizzle going on out there. Yeah, I know I'm, uh, thank you, Julian. I know I did not shave on Facebook. I had to do Audible. It is being live on fit YouTube. I get that, okay? Bam! All right. Forget about raising the capital and just overcome. Adapt and overcome. It's not that hard. A lot of you get told no. Ooh. Well, the big sizzle, big pan's not available. You can still cook bacon in a small pan, can't you? Well, yeah. All right. So I got a seven step to sizzle. Seven steps to get it sizzle. It's got seven steps to sizzle. Sizzling, all right? <laughs> find a deal. <laughs> and what I mean, I don't mean go out and find a list. That's not what I'm talking about. If you really want to make money but by... Trying to advertise a list available is just bullshit. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. I have people call me today. Hey, well, how do I figure pricing? I'm like, I don't know. Ask the seller. Don't look to me to figure out pricing. You have to ask the seller what they want or figure out an asset or two. Okay? Do a little due, due diligence. You know, I, you know what, Jack? I'm tired of ass kicking. <laughs> I don't want to kick ass. I'm tired of it. I want people to do shit. All right? I want people to do something because this business is not that difficult. I, I, and I, I'm, I'm just so fed up of those that would just starve to death, that just sit over in the corner, that can't, that if they had to learn how to walk as a, an adult, they would all be helpless paraplegics in the corner. Okay? 
And what I mean by find a deal, find a deal. If you go get a list, do some due diligence on it. Put it under, first of all, put it under contract. Hey, I want to buy this one. Can I get seven days? Okay. Find a, something that makes sense with a price below 50% 50, 50 of fair market value. Okay. And that we're talking as is not ARV. And, and you know what? Check the values. Call a realtor. Jump online. Call a realtor. Hey, could you drive by this? Pick up the phone. Okay. Pick up the phone and find a realtor, realtor.com. Hey, would you mind pulling in? And you know, if somebody says no, next, okay? Check taxes. Wait, how's that? How do you check taxes? Well, you go to Netra online, what we've talked about, and, and then make a phone call, make sure they didn't go get wiped out with tax foreclosure, okay? That's number one. Step number two, send an email out to your contacts. Now, many of you have a business card list. Take the business cards, the email's there. First name, last name. You don't need to put the full address, but you know what happens? Is many of you are out networking all over the place. I know that I was when I first started. So the first thing I did, I took all the business cards I got and knew that was my database. That was my value. Okay? If I went across country to an event or if I went to the local meetup group or I went to Dallas or to San Antonio or Austin and I got a business card, that was a valuable asset. Okay? That was all the value right there. First name, last name, email, cell phone number, and then city, state. Why city, state? Because if I ever came across a deal in their city or state, I could now filter my list by San Antonio or Texas and then send an email out just to those people, okay? MailChimp is free up to 2,000 contacts. You can put everybody in MailChimp and still filter. Who's got a San Antonio? Who's got a Texas? He lives in Texas or Illinois or Indiana, Okay and send an email out to your contacts. Now, I would not post the address. Don't put 123 Main Street. You don't want somebody to try to run, run around you and then drive by the house and knock on the door, piss off the borrowers. But post a decent photo, you know, not a map, okay? Now, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I got some people out there that are, are very good. They, they get a tape in, they batch geo it, they post it, hey, I got a deal I'm working on anybody interested in on, on 180 plus assets. That's great, but when you, narrow that list down, you have to bam the sizzle. <coughs> Why, who's going to, oh, I want somebody to fund my deals. Well, all they see is a map. There's no sizzle to it. So take some good photos. You see some assets some good street views and some photos and things like that. Or find photos of your property online. Take a second, save that photo and post that photo. Don't post the address, but say, hey, here's a photo in Columbus, Ohio that I'm working through. Okay, share it. And, and the sizzle's a variety of different things. If the property's good, you got to take it a step further. Just throwing a property up here. Share, hey, if they get reinstated based on, here's what their P&I payment, if they get reinstated on roughly what we're expecting to offer, here's what a reinstatement rate would be. Or we're buying it at 40% of value. Okay, or it's an $875 a month rental rate where we get paid up for 10 grand. Okay, uh, the thing to identify what the sizzle would be is what the hell would get you out of bed? What's that scent that would get you out of bed, okay? What is it that's going to make you want to get out of bed to make to respond to that email? Just saying, I got a deal doesn't make it a deal, okay? Those are the two most critical parts. Go find a deal and then market it. Pretty simple. Send an email to your contacts. And you, you know what? Don't use MailChimp, okay? If you're a cheap bastard, don't use MailChimp. You can send an email out and sit there and wonder who opened your email, and sit there and try to read a crystal ball. Oh, yes, Lord, please tell me mentally who opened my email. And you, what you'll get is crickets. The reason you use MailChimp, simple, it's easy to do, use, I got all these videos, is that it'll tell you who opened your email, who clicked on your link, who maybe clicked on your other links in the email. That's valuable information because you know what? If you see that they clicked on your email, you could send another email back to them. Say, hey, thanks for checking on our deal. Would you like to set up a phone call to talk? Okay. Now let's talk about how to get the stove lit up. Because those are the first two things. You went out, you went to the store, you found the deal, okay? And you brought it back home, okay? Number three, send out an email to the meetup groups in the area or discussion boards in the state of the asset. <gasps> That's a novel concept. Wow. There are investors outside of my home market, Scott Carson? Yes, there is. If you go to meetup.com, you'll find all the meetup groups you need. Type in the city, state, and the type of 
uh, real estate, the, the focus real estate, and you'll find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of investment clubs all across the country. I am a part of 253 meetup groups in most of my major markets, okay? Because I can go on there, either post in the discussion board, or I can send an email out, or I can just go on and find somebody that I need, okay? Or I can post a deal with the discussion board. Hey, I got a deal available. You are about to see us rock and roll a lot of discussion boards. We are about to rock meetups world, okay? Now, the beautiful thing is a lot of the meetup groups have a mass email list you can send to. Actually, tonight, I sent one email out to three groups. It was over 10,000 people I sent it to tonight. Mm -hmm. Three emails went out to 10,000 people. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, you know what? That didn't cost me anything. It's about 30 minutes of my time. Less than 30 minutes of my time. To do something that didn't cost anything. But how many of you have either posted something to a meetup group or discussion board or to the mailing list in the last month, 90 days, six months? I know a few of you have, which is great because you're probably my students. But for those of you who haven't, and you're like, I don't have a network. Yeah, you don't have a network because you never did anything. Don't quit being an Eeyore out there and be a Tigger out and go make it happen. Okay. Now the next thing, step number four, post to LinkedIn, your page, write a post about it, post it to large groups. Okay. You got a good picture of the photo of the property, put it in there. Talk about the deal, the specifics. Don't share the address still, but hey, here's this asset in Columbus. Here's what's owed. Here's the things like that. Boom. You could post that same deal into the large real estate groups that are on LinkedIn. There's literally groups that have 700,000 real estate investors. Okay. Boom. Go to reiclub.com or National Re Group to find a local group and ask for wholesalers in the area, number five. You can't cook it. Maybe somebody else is a list that's willing to cook it for you. And you know what? Pay the wholesaler a $500 uh, dollar fi uh, finding fee if they find a buyer for your deal or a thousand, something. Okay. Don't know how to find a, uh, a wholesaler? Uh, when you go to reiclub.com, it gives you the president's name. Email the president of the group. Say, hey, I'm looking for your local wholesalers. I need somebody to talk to. Okay. Not hard to do. Oh, and some of you who spend forever on Facebook and comment on everything, should probably go to the real estate groups. Just type in real estate, real estate 101, or Houston real estate, San Antonio real estate, Columbus, Detroit. Literally there you will find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of groups of real estate investors. Heck, we have a freaking network of nationwide note closer groups across the country that people join in. That's fine. It's not a lot of people, but a few people join in and those are the people that I want to deal with. Okay. Seven. All right. That was six. Seven is just a post there and let them roll out of bed. You'll start getting contacts. You'll start getting messages. It, it may not happen like that. But if you keep doing that on a consistent basis, you'll have plenty of people coming to you that want to fund a deal, that want to buy a deal. Okay? Now, if you don't want to burn the bacon, <laughs> nobody wants to burn the bacon, right? Uh, here are some great easy websites to jump on, find a couple deals that you can work through. You know what? Practice cooking the bacon. All right. You can practice cooking the bacon by jumping on Watermark Exchange and looking at a deal or two or using some of the things there to help you market or to fine tune your marketing while you're waiting around. FCI Exchange as well. Help you can jump on Madison Management and they have deals available. Okay. You just got to put your bacon hat on to start thinking a little bit differently than the, I can't find anything. It says, I will find something. Just changing the hat, changing the mentality. Because whether you like it or not, everybody, you are a, the number one determining factor of how your day, your week, your month goes. It's not your surroundings. It's how you react to things. It's how you mentally focus on things. Well, is it going to be a good week? Of course, it's going to be a good week. But if you have that kind of attitude, of course, it's going to be a crappy week. Go find something. Use it as a learning opportunity. Go on. Hey, I'm going to use this to prime the pump. I'm going to practice. I don't want to burn the bacon, but I'm going to practice it. Okay? Walk so, through some of the assets there. Use some of those to market and get people excited in some mar markets out there. Okay? Or hell, pick up the phone and call someone with deals and ask to market a deal. Hey, do you have any deals I can help you market that help grow something that you'll pay me something on? Yeah, Sure. And then what you do is just rinse and repeat. The seven steps. 
you're rinse and repeat. Cook the bacon, buy the bacon, unwrap the bacon, get a skillet, turn the stove on, cook the bacon, let it cool, and then eat the bacon. Okay? Nom, 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 nom. Eat the bacon, everybody. Okay? So the reason I'm, 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 I'm being a little sharp tonight is because this is what I did when I started. I know I'm not like everybody else. I know this crazy man who just, you know, has toys in his office. Okay? We'll post pictures of bacon. I got the easy button on here. That was easy. Exactly. It was easy. All right. Okay. I know I'm a little goofy. I know my staff laughs at, laughs at me. I, get, you know, I don't care. Southwest Airlines, call me Tech Carson. All right. Southwest decided to give me my own plane. <laughs> okay. Bum, 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 bum. But what I'm getting at is literally the things I just shared with you the simple seven steps, not difficult. It just takes time. That's what I did when I started. I had no money when I started, okay? I had no investors to fund stuff because it was coming out of the whole crap of Austin being in a rough place like everywhere else was. People were scared. <laughs> Hello, 2008. It was just a crap-tacular market. But the beautiful thing is there's plenty of inventory on the note investment side. I'm like, well, I'm not finding really fix and flip. I can find these note deals that, man. I can make this happen. I know I'm not, I'm just, I don't have anybody, but I'm just going to go find somebody. I'm going to work through these deals to make sure they work out. I'm literally going to jump on my dry erase board over here and I'm going to work through them. Okay. And I had a blessing that I, I shared an office. I paid, we paid like $400 a month for this one little small office, like 10 by 10. It's smaller than my office is here right now. And literally it shared a training room and there was dry erase boards on three and a half sides of the walls, which is just awesome. So I would get a tape in, and I would have my computer and I would go in there and I would just work, find out, nope, this didn't work. Boom, let's look what we find here. Boom, at the end of the night, I'd look back and there'd be 20 deals written up on the boards. Like, okay, those are the 20 deals that I'm gonna focus on, okay? And then I'd go out and market those, okay? <laughs> yes, you know your success when Southwest gives you your own plane. That's funny, Laura, I like that. Ooh, that's my private plane right there, all right. But literally, that's why I'm getting at, guys and gals. This was not difficult. No one understood notes back then. It was so much harder than it is today. Gee, I, there was no, there was not really a true like note summit. I mean, there is noteworthy, but that was more owner financing. Paper sources around, but it was more owner financing seconds. It wasn't the true non-performing side. We didn't have these thousands of contract for deeds that you pick up for cheap. It was just, it was different. No one understood notes. Okay. I went out and created a market. It's so much easier these days. You have so many different more tools to do this stuff. And it just drives me bonkers that most people aren't taking action and they complain and bitch and moan. There's no deals. They want to be spoon fed. And I'm sick of it. I'm literally sick of it. Because if you do the things that I tell you to do, you will find deals. If you do the things I tell you to do and where to post, you'll find investors. It's literally that easy. You just do as I say, you'll close deals. Chris Savigny closed on 60 plus deals by doing what I say. Eric Hyde just closed on 30 plus deals by doing what I did. Gail Villanueva has closed on, I think, over a dozen plus deals that I, because she's doing what I told her to do. This is not a difficult market. If you just do what others tell you to do, what you don't want to listen to is those that bitch and moan about life. Well, there's no deals. There's too many investors. There's those damn gurus that are just teaching all these people the 10,000 investors Scott Carson is just going to kill the market. You know, it's not going to kill the market because so many people don't have a damn spine. And they're scared of success. Okay. And the first six deals that I did, I made 6K on a note that I wholesaled in Jacksonville, Florida. I got her under contract for four. It was worth like 30. I marketed it on a blog, shared the blog post to a Jacksonville media group, and I made a $6,000 wholesale fee. Great. The next asset I did, I only made two grand. Okay. But two grand for the two days of work I put into it was pretty damn good. The next deal I did, I made eight grand. All right. A week later. The next deal I did, I made 35 grand by wholesale in an apartment complex. Okay. I got a big list from a bank. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to buy. I don't have money to buy all these, but I made it work. It's worth the asset was worth seven hundred thousand. I could pick it up for three seventy five. Let me try to sell it for four twenty five. And an investor contacted me and said, "Hey, I've only got really four fifteen. Can we make this work?" I'm like, "Hell yeah! Can you fund? Yes." 
I'm, I'm not going to complain about a $10,000 discount and make 35. Next deal was 25 grand. Next deal was a $100,000 wholesale fee by doing the exact same things that I did for the very first deal. Bam, baby. This is not a difficult market. It's the same, doing the same things over and over again and just actually doing shit. And the fix or flop or the whatever, I've turned down reality shows. I've turned down at least three because nobody's going to understand it. It's too complicated because most of America wants to go out and touch it and rub it and pick out pink, pink colors and carpet. The reason that the note business is so well is because it's a, a higher evolved level investor. Why do you think the banks do the note game? Why do you think banks make that? You're in the paper game. You're evolved. You're a different species. You're a different X-Men. And we should be the note men, okay? Because you're evolved. You're a different mutant. You think probably a little bit differently, okay? But if you're sitting there, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Get off your ass. Pull your head out of your ass. And start doing something. Start doing something, Okay. If you hit a bump, pick up the phone, shoot a text message, make, make a phone call, drop an email to somebody, okay? If you can make those and still split commissions 50% with somebody who's helping you out, who? why wouldn't you do that, right? Yeah, of course. A lot of times I just split commissions. Oh, somebody help me out with you. Hey, I'm going to give you half my commission, okay? Thank you for helping me. Let's do this again. And you know what they said? Let's do it. Let's, let's do it again, okay? Bam! You make it happen. Okay. And this is not a difficult thing. It's rinse and repeat. Okay. So the biggest thing I can tell of you guys is look, if you're struggling for deals, there are plenty of deals out there. I know you're probably tired of hearing me say that. Okay. Just get off your ass, start advertising. Now, if you want to, one of the things that you'll see, I'm going to share something with you. One of the things that happens, and I shared this actually this weekend with my fast track students, when you start advertising your note investor, you know, what's going to happen. You're going to have people come to you say, Hey, I got a note available for sale. I'm like, okay, great. Is it owner finance institutional? What's the situation? And they're going to send you stuff. And you know what you can do if it's an owner finance deal that you don't want or you're not going to buy it yourself or don't have the funds? <gasps> you could sell it to somebody like me or a broker. And one of the biggest brokers of owner finance notes here that you'll find is a little company called Finance. I'm sorry, not Finance. Uh, Finac, USA.com. Sorry. All right, Fanac, and I'm going to share my screen. Yes, don't get all bent out of shape. This is Fred Foote's company out of Michigan. They're also got an office here in Austin. They give you a free application quote. All you got to do is get a fast quote. Literally click there. This is their broker deck. Put in all the information in the note deal. Non, you know, usually like performing. They don't, they don't buy it much non-performing, but put it in. Literally fill all this in, hit submit, and you know what? You usually get an email back in less than 24 hours or 24 hours or more if it's over the weekend. But literally put it there. Get a quote. That's one of the things that I did to make money too. I was brokering you know, owner finance notes to the people. Uh, you know, I, oh, they want, tw you know, like finance company says, we want 20, we'll give you 27. Uh, I need to make a little bit of money. How about, and then you, they work, you actually work with the seller and say, okay, how much do you want to make? Well, I want to make two grand. Okay. Well, Mr. And Mr. Uh, borrower or the note owner, uh, we can only give you 25 for this deal, okay? So they'll literally help you broker that in the middle. So that's one great way to broker notes on the front end. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and send letters or postcards, stuff like that. But if you just start advertising that you buy notes, that you have people available, you this will happen. You'll get stuff up. And yeah, you may have to do 20 bids to get one deal, but it's still cheaper than going out and digging ditches. Still better than going out and having to bust your ass for some job at seven bucks an hour. Okay. You just have to do that. And this is one of the easy ways. FNACUSA.com and hit on their fast quote. It's a very simple thing. Daniel Mancom, Jay Daniels, Andy McDaniels. If you're watching, you guys owe me a steak, uh, uh, a bacon dinner at some point. Okay. Questions, comments? Okay. So, Joseph, you're not going to go out and buy a note, uh, note on an apartment complex right now. So, just forget that. Okay. Uh, the bank would give me, you deal with the bank, they'll give you at least two weeks, 30 days, okay? 
You're not just put it under contract. I didn't put any put any earnest money. I just find deals that they had. And at that time it was low, low balance, like under a million dollars loans on apartments. That's not going to exist right now, but there's plenty of single family homes. There's plenty of residential properties out there, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes. Okay. They would give me, I had some banks that give me 30 days to close. That's if you you give me you give me an hour, I'm pretty good. You give me a day, I'm even better. You give me a week. <laughs> I'm awesome. You give me 30 days and I'm downright unstoppable. All right. <coughs> but the reason it's scary is you don't have a clue who's going to be funding that deal, right? It's because you've never sent an email out. You've never communicated to your database. And I see people, this is what just drives me bonkers. I see people posting about <coughs> their weight loss or they're in the gym or they're riding their bike or they're going to Disney, they're marketing their life. But when it comes down to doing a deal, they ain't marketing shit. Oh, I lost 20 pounds. Well, great. Why don't you share a photo of the property you're looking at? Why don't you put on 20 grand? I'd be gladly put on 20 grand. I don't want to take it off, but share what you're doing. It's not that hard. That's why I say, if you can share, on, everybody's so happy to share in and jump on Facebook and bash people and all that shit. I hate that. Because I, I see these people that spend all this time on their negativity and they won't take a damn step for themselves. They won't share a picture of a property they're working through. Some of you will, which is great. Some of you are my students, but so, a lot of people won't. And that's what separates the winners from those that don't do anything. And winning in this business isn't making a hundred grand your first year. Winning in the note business is closing on your first deal. Close it on your 10th deal. Close it on your 20th deal and doing it over and over again until you're like Dan Deppin, who after his 13th note deal, he said, you know what, boss? Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Okay? That's what it all comes down to. And I, I so want you guys to have so much success. And it just bonk, it's just mind-boggling that people, I know common sense is not common, some people say, but it's mind-numbing that the things that we go through on a day in, day out, day in, day out, and I share and share, and there's the things that people are doing, it's just stuff is right in your face, and you just won't take action. Just won't take action. And that's a very, very kind of frustrating thing. And I, the, it's not that hard to do if you'll just actually... Oh, you know what you do? You you get it on Google property. You get all excited about the numbers. Oh, I'm, a, I'm breaking down assets. That's great. Okay? I'm breaking assets down. That's phenomenal. Okay? And four, five. So this is our 90, 93rd note night in America we've done in the last since... April of 2016, our 93rd Note Night in America. And we, we don't do it every week. We'll do one next Monday night. I can promise you that one. I think I know exactly which one that's going to be called. I think we're going to call it Send the Damn Email. Um, the one following out on the 20th, I don't know exactly what we'll do yet. We'll probably do something fun live. But what I'm trying to get at is if you ask, at least if you ask for two weeks, if you ask for 30 days and they say, no, two weeks is good enough. So you got two weeks. It's better than you asking for two weeks and they say one week. You guys all don't, you will never get what you don't ask for. You'll never get what you don't ask for. And that's why it's so important by asking, how do you ask for stuff? How do you ask for people to fund your deal? You send out the sizzle. You send out the bam. You send out the, the picture of the property and the details of it. Just not the address. Okay. But you do that. You build your list along. You build a long-term business. Your business, many of you want to be in real estate much longer than a week. Then much longer than a month, much longer than a year. You're here for the long term. So start doing the things today to build that long-term business, to build that long-term success. Because if you're not willing to put people in a database or send an email out like a real business does, then you're just playing in this game. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your coaching dollars. If you're not going to take the action and take this seriously, you're wasting your money. You're wasting my time. And it's time to quit wasting your energy and wait, wasting your time. It sure as hell quit wasting my time and go do something. Make something happen. Be proud of yourself. Get the sizzle going. There's nothing better than just kicking butt and taking names 
And kick and bunt taking in could be five deals. It could be 10 deals. It could be one deal, whatever that is. One deal a month making two grand. Oh my gosh, that can be life-changing for a lot of people. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. You owe it to your kids, your grandkids, whoever is your why. You owe it to them to go make something happen. And you're going to have troubles. You're going to have highs and lows like anything else. You're going to some deal flow that comes in, some deal flows that go down too. But you know what? At time, eventually, those peaks and valleys, those valleys are a lot higher than the previous peaks were ever before. Okay? So do something. Go make me proud. Go make yourself proud. And go bam and make it happen by going out and bringing home the bacon, everybody. Questions, comments, concerns before we wrap it up for tonight? Questions, comments, concerns. Have we got something, a question about the deal, question about the seven steps? What's the questions that you have? Thanks, Jeff. If you've got some, I'll tell you, if you've got some lazy assets, you got some money you're scared to death and want to do, we got a variety of assets out there available right now that I can put your money in. All right. Get it in, get it rock and roll. If you'd rather do that, that's fine. Just let me know. Bam, we'll put your money to work. We'll work the assets. You'll get a flat return on investment on your time and your money. It's better, okay? Thanks, Jay Johnson. Thanks, Jay Widowies. Look, I'm not here. I don't want to kick butt. I don't want to shoot people out. In. People say, I don't want Scott to yell at me. I'm not yelling. I, okay, maybe I am yelling a little bit. I just, I just, I know what you guys are capable of. Okay. All right. And the thing is, I would not be sitting in my office, but it's probably 90 degrees in here because they turned the AC off uh, two hours ago. All right, or three, yeah, three hours ago now at this point, working out with a you know, LD light and another light in the corner there. If I didn't think you guys could do this, I'm a big believer that you guys can do this. If I can freaking do this, look, I'm not the smartest shul and shed. I just like, if there's an opportunity, why can't I do that? Let me, let me use that. Let me try that. Let me try it once. If it works great, if it doesn't work, ah, great. Just take action. Just be like Nike. Just go do it. Uh, uh, do we contact you directly that if we want help being invested in an asset? Yes. So I meant, I meant to send you a response back to just having a chance today. Yes. Shoot me an email. Uh, I can put your money into a couple a deal or two, depending on the amount that you're looking to do. All right. Great stuff. There's no action without traction. That's right, Sam. Eric Edwards asks, what percentage of the time are you cooking flat return bacon versus a big slab on the back end? It varies. I mean, if I uh, looking at a big portfolio of performing notes, I can still bit of, pull a big slab of bacon off of there versus just a flat return. It just varies. There's no percentage. It just depends on what's going on. The deal will, will hold. Every deal, every I'll give you an example. Uh, we got a portfolio. Uh, some performing notes been performing for two, three years. They want to sell at a decent price. Now, if I were to hold on to it, it's not a, a big return monthly. But if I turn around and sell them as reperformers, which I could, I could really make some nice. <laughs> mice bake in between the arbitrage, but I want to keep some of the months, probably some of the deals for cash flow. So it's all dependent on what you look at, Eric. The thing I can tell you, take some action and look at the deal, work through the deals. Okay. Quit worrying about what my percentage is and start looking at what your percentage should be. Cause my business is a whole lot different than yours. My business is a whole lot different than anybody else's. And that's the beautiful thing about this. It's a beautiful thing about it. So, all right. Questions, comments, concerns. I'm tired of sweating my ass off in here. <laughs> uh, guys, go do something, make something happen. And uh, like I said before, you guys can literally bring home the bacon. I don't care what your excuse is. I don't care what your hours work. You always from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. And the things I was talking about doing, you don't have to do it during the day. You can, those are simple things you can do while working at another job, just taking the time away from Gray's Anatomy or ESPN or whatever it is to make things happen. Okay. I might have a few that I'm looking to sell. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, George. I appreciate it, buddy. Okay. Uh-oh. Somebody should me some wine. Good stuff. See you all at the top, everybody. Bye.